I'm Maria Menunos, and you're tuned in to AfterBuzz TV, the ESPN of TV talk. I'm Maria Menunos, and you're tuned in to AfterBuzz TV, the ESPN of TV talk. Now, let the buzz begin. I'm like, I can't hear the music, but I know it's playing. Niambi, welcome. Welcome to AfterBuzz TV. How are you? I'm amazing. I'm doing all right. Doing all things considering, I'm doing, I'm doing well. I love to hear that. Okay, so I got to get this question off the top, and this is going to really dictate how this interview is going to go. So, Guinean jollof or Nigerian jollof? I mean, come on now. See, I feel like you're, you're already hedging your bets. You're already, you're already <laughs> trying to leave the <laughs> You know I'm Nigerian, so I'm going to always say Nigerian jollof rice. Okay, and I'm uh, Guinean, so, yeah. you know, that is, I think, a long history of battling. And yeah. I know you know in the back of your mind that it's really Guinean jollof that really you know pops what? off. For, for the purposes of this interview, so we can, I, can, I can leave unscathed, I'm going <laughs> to let that happen. <laughs> but I'm going to simply enjoy my Nigerian jollof rice. <laughs> Uh, let's jump right into it. Um, so for viewers that are not familiar with The Good Fight, tell us where does this season start and how can they jump right into it? All right. Well, as far as this season, this season of The Good Fight uh, sort of begins, actually begins from where we left off from season three. This is season four. Uh, season three, we were left with a cliffhanger as far as not knowing whether or not uh, Diane or uh, Kurt uh, were hurt uh, in terms of um, you know the, uh, the the authorities coming in and, and uh, you know you know raiding their house. So um, so the question is you know what happened? And uh, we begin this uh, season with uh, a what if scenario. Mm -hmm. What if certain things happen? Now I know people have seen the uh, you know some people have seen the episode, uh, uh, but I don't want to. I'm, what if, I don't want to ruin it. I just don't want to ruin it. You know what I mean? For the people okay. who haven't seen it. Because I just want, you know, I, you know, I don't want people to like, you know, hear it and then be like, ah, I don't know about that. But then, but at the same time, it's like, you know, what if, I have to say it. I have to say it. What if mm -hmm. Hillary won back in 2016? You know, well, like, that's the scenario. Now, how it comes about, all of those things, you know, it's up to you to watch. But like, uh, very interesting, very much like comics, um, you know, in terms of like the what if scenario, when you, you know, think of Marvel, you have what if, when you think of um, DC, you think of Elseworlds, you know, but like in terms of an alternate, an alternate reality, what would happen? Yeah, and, and it's so powerful, especially in the political climate that we're in right now, and all of us being self-quarantined and yeah. looking for leaders and looking for hope and all of that stuff, that I think yeah. the first episode of season four really kicks off the question, like, would we be in this situation mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. if dot, dot, dot? Exactly. So, exactly. so really, really powerful. Um, Describe your character on The Good Fight. So you play Jay, mm -hmm. and he's an investigator. Yes. Uh, what do you say, how would you describe your character to people that are not familiar with it? Okay, so I played Jay DePersia. Uh, you wonder how I got that last name? There is yes. an episode that actually um, goes into it, uh, the immigration episode. Uh, my, my real name actually is uh, Jamil Dopesi. Um, but, uh, but you gotta, if you haven't, if you don't know that you have to binge through the first three seasons to, uh, to find out, uh, that and why, um, I'm just one of those cats that just like, like tries to, first of all, the moral compass of the, uh, the firm that tries to, uh, make sure that we keep, you know, all things intact in terms of, um, our, uh, our, uh, you know, conscious sensibilities, I guess, in terms of, you know, making sure we're doing what's right by us. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, when that's not happening, you know, I begin to, I, I, I challenge the status quo uh, when the status quo um, doesn't support us. And this is, of course, a traditionally um, uh, or historically uh, Black law firm. And so I do everything I can to uh, make sure we're protected. 
Um, I'm, uh, I'm a person who looks at, at, at the firm, all those people who are in the firm as my family. And I make sure I take care of my family by any means necessary. Now you're quoted as saying, Jay says there's a public life, a private life and a secret life. Yes. And Jay tends to li live in the secret life. Uh, can you elaborate on that a little bit more? And do you think that the viewers this season are gonna be able to dive into Jay's secret life a little bit more? Um, well, first of all, yeah, so with that, I, I'd like to say, cause I got this from uh, this uh, documentary um, that was about Pete Hamill, I wanna say, and uh, Jimmy Breslin, um, yep. great journalists, um, you know, for, uh, 70s, 80s, 90s. Um, and um, it was um, Pete Hamill who said, uh, there's the public life, there's the private life. Public life, of course, is for uh, public consuming, everyone, everyone has access. Private life is invitation only, uh, like I'm inviting you right now, you know, into my private life right now. And of course, the secret life is nobody's business. And so when it comes to this, as far as finding more about Jay's secret life, it's nobody's business. Ooh, but, um, great answer. Great answer. <laughs> yeah, but I'll say this though: as far as um, you, you'll get to, you'll get to know more about Jay in terms of how um, uh, he approaches approaches certain cases, his perspective on things. Um, the one thing, the big thing about um, about uh, being a private investigator is about it's 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 really about the information that you hold. The fact that you have, you know, you hold all the cards, and it's like, okay, well, what card do I play right now? You know what I mean? Yeah. So, um, you only see the cards I allow you to see. And your character spends a lot of time with Marissa, uh, investigating yeah. and kind of protecting the firm. How is yeah. it to work with that actor? And over the years, has your off-screen dynamic mm -hmm. changed? because you can see that on screen, you guys have become kind of closer and you have your own kind of language and how to deal with each other. Yeah. Uh, the great Sarah Steele who plays Marissa Gold. Um, she's incredible. Like when I first came on the show, uh, season one, episode three, uh, I, was just, I was initially just going to be a recurring uh, you know, guest star. And I mean, she she welcomed me with open arms. I mean, it was just incredible. Like it was from day one, from jump. Uh, the chemistry was great. Um, she's just a wonderful actress to work with. I mean, she's like by far for me um, uh, the person on set who really made me feel like I was at home. And then, of course, as long as you know, the longer I've been there, and and over the the course of the season, the seasons, um, everyone has been you know, family. I mean, it's been great. It's been, it's been great. But it all started with, with Sarah Steele for me. That's awesome. Now, uh, your show has really uh, been applauded for the diversity in casting. And I know that it's like 50-50, uh, African-Americans, women, all of that. So I wanted yeah. to ask you a little bit about uh, if you can speak on the diversity in casting, as well as it, is it like that behind the scenes with the crew and production? Yeah, you know, uh, as far as the diversity in casting, it's amazing. It's, it's just great to, to see um, so many, you know, different faces, cultures, um, you know, that, you know, make up those faces. Um, it's just, it's, it's, it's great to reflect the world we live in. And, um, and that's a beautiful thing. Uh, same with the set. I mean, you see uh, women, you see people of color, you just see a variety of people um, who are working uh, behind the scenes. And then I got to give it up to our background actors, man. Our background actors are incredible. Like, they're the ones that, that really do set the tone with the professionalism that they bring and the, and the, uh, the wealth of talent that they bring. Um, because, um, you know, I watch many movies and shows where my favorite part is to watch the uh, background actors mm -hmm. and how much they, um, they, they can steal focus mm -hmm. um, because they're, they're doing a little uh, too much. Um, <laughs> but uh, these actors are just, it takes, it, takes, it takes skill 
and um, you know, and and a uh, level of uh, acting chops and imagination to uh, do what they do, and they bring it every time. I love that. Now, if I was to ask you, uh, what kind of artist do you want to be? Because you know, you're known for also Mike and Molly, which is comedy. Yeah. You're known for the theater and mm. working alongside like people like Al Pacino and all of that. Yeah. What do you want your mark to be? My mark as an artist, I want to be somebody who just, who, who, who tried it all, you know, who, um, who, who was not like, who's not put in a box. I don't want to be put in a box, man. You know, I want to, I want to, I, I just want to, I want to play. I'm just a playful dude. I just like to play, you know what I'm saying? I just like to, you know, take on new challenges and, and, um, and put on different skin and, you know, you know, play around in there and just see, you know, what, um, you know, what, what cooks, you know, and, and um, entertaining, um, entertaining the people, you know. I love that. Now, when I was doing some research, background research, because, you know, I was trying to dive into your quote unquote private life, found yeah. out that you were a baller, four years, division one basketball, um, yeah. Bucknell. Uh, do you still feel like you have hoop skills? Oh, no, no. The hoop skills don't go away. I mean, hoop, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Hoop skills are there. Forever. Now, the joints and the bones, the tendons, muscle, they ain't quite with the skills. Uh, got it. So, I love that. In my brain, whoo, I can cut you up like, ugh. Favorite, team, favorite team, favorite oh, basketball team. Favorite basketball team. I grew up a Lakers fan because I was a huge Magic Johnson fan, huge, huge fan of Magic Johnson. Like, like you couldn't tell me no, there was nobody better. Like that was, that was me, my ride or die was Magic. Uh, so I've been a Lakers fan all my life. Um, and then of course, collegiately, you know, I was born in Oklahoma. So I've been a huge University of Oklahoma, Oklahoma Sooners fan. So um, college, Oklahoma, NBA, the Los Angeles Lakers. Love it. Now, I also found out that you are an avid comic book fan, uh, yeah. writer, and you draw. So mm -hmm. I guess my question to you is, because I know that you have a few books that have already been published. Do you think that you'll ever uh, do a comic book series, create a comic book series? That, uh, the, if will I ever create a comic book series, the plan is to create a comic book series at some point. What I want to do is I want to be able to write and draw my own comic. Um, at this point where I'm at right now, I don't draw fast enough because I, I uh, for that immigration episode, I, you know, a lot of those drawings were my own, mm -hmm. uh, but it took me a while to get into it. And mm -hmm. that's when I had a healthy respect for the comic book artists out there who are in deadlines. I mean, those guys are drawing a comic book page, let alone just at one image, a uh, comic book page a day. And some of the greats were drawing four a day. And so yeah. um, if I was to draw a, an entire comic, it took me a week to draw a, uh, a page. Cause I was, oh, wow. yeah. So, um, but the, you know, I'm working on it, taking classes, doing everything I can to try and, and, and truncate the process and make it um, much faster. And that I can then one day create a comic book for the people. The people are waiting. We love that. Um, I know we're running a little out of time a little bit, but I did want to ask you your favorite moment shooting on the good fight from mm -hmm. season one up until, you know, the abbreviated season four. My favorite moment shooting on the good fight actually was the scene of Okay, we, so we had uh, the great Clark Johnson um, directing one of our episodes. He directed the episode where um, uh, my character quits the firm. Yep. Um, and I had a scene with uh, the incredible Delroy Lindo um, where um, I'm basically like letting him know I'm, I'm done. And the process leading up to that, just how much uh, Delroy took care of me uh, and in turn was open to allowing myself to um, uh, be there for him in, in, in the process. It felt very collaborative in, in, in an amazing way, in the way art should be. And uh, the way Clark 
like really supported us and supported the process and gave us the time to find it and make that happen. That probably was my 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 favorite moment because it allowed it actually even though that was season um, uh, two. Um, that's probably when I felt like, oh shoot, I'm here, you know, that I'm, I am a part of the good wife, good fight universe. Like it felt like this was, this was, this was it, this was happening, you know? And, uh, I really appreciated the Kings, uh, Robert and Michelle King, the creators of the show for giving me that opportunity to, to, um, to play and and um, and push myself to uh, to limits that you know viewers who know me from Mike and Molly hadn't hadn't seen before. Excellent. Last question is: This season, what can viewers expect? Are you guys going to be more on a political drive or more on the racial climate, or is it going to be a combination of both? I will say that it'll be a combination of both this season for uh, uh, The Good Fight season four. Again, watch, boom, please. Um, uh, this season for me feels like it's, uh, we're dealing a lot in, um, in secret, yes, in terms of uh, the secrets, uh, you know, that uh, we keep, um, the conspiracies that we make, uh, and how we navigate the law through all of that. And um, it's uh, it's very interesting, you know, because there's there's there are aspects of this season. I, I know that there are billboards all over the place. There are you know ads where they say what is Memo Six Eighteen, which you guys will find out mm -hmm. uh, soon enough. Um, but uh, when that question is posed, please know this: I don't know. <laughs> don't ask me. Okay. So don't ask me. I do not know what Memo Six Eighteen is. I am still trying to find out. I asked the Kings. Uh, oh, and by the way, what is Memo 618? And they were like, huh, we don't know. So they keep it close to the vest. Therefore, if they don't know, or if they're telling me they don't, they don't know, then I don't know. So don't ask me. Uh, Let's find weird. out what unravels. Find out. Yeah. So uh, The Good Fight, Thursday night, CBS All Access. What is great about this time is that we have a bunch of time so guys if you haven't watched you can binge from season one up into season four and you can find Nambi Nambi as the best investigator and perhaps if you're nice he will let you in on this memo 618. Yeah, Thanks Nambi nice. for joining us we appreciate you and uh have a great like rest of season. No thank you so much thank you for having me this has been a blast thank you. Absolutely. Bye for now. Bye-bye. Our founder, Kevin Undergaro, and me, Maria Menunos, would like to thank you for tuning in to AfterBuzz TV. Remember, we're not just the first, we're the biggest in the world, and we're the only destination for all your favorite TV shows. Whatever you crave, we've got it. So go to AfterBuzzTV.com and check out our lineup. Buzz you later. <laughs> The views expressed herein are those of the host only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals.